today's battlefields, where precision and stealth draw the line between life and death, one figure moves through the shadows. The sniper. Silent. Lethal. Mysterious. Every move is carefully calculated. Every breath controlled with surgical precision. And every shot has the power to change the outcome of a war. These elite marksmen can spend 24 to 72 hours completely still, hidden in dense forests, crumbling buildings, or improvised underground shelters. They don't move, they don't eat, they barely breathe. But this level of endurance isn't unusual. It's part of the job, a reflection of the training, patience, and discipline required to complete a mission and make it out alive. Now here's the question. If they're so accurate, why don't snipers usually aim for the head? Can the Earth's rotation really throw off a bullet's path? And how are drones beginning to replace them in modern warfare? Don't worry. In this video, we'll break it all down for you. From the science behind the perfect shot, to the new threats these shadow warriors face on the battlefield. Get ready, because this isn't Call of Duty. This is the real world of snipers. On July 2nd, 2005, fate delivered a cruel twist on the streets of Iraq. A U.S. soldier named Steven Scheider was shot by an enemy sniper. But thanks to his body armor, the bullet didn't kill him. While the enemy team filmed the scene, confident they had taken him down, Scheider, disoriented but alive, got back on his feet. Fueled by adrenaline, he took cover behind a Humvee, and with an almost supernatural sense of awareness, he located the sniper. What followed was a high-stakes pursuit that ended with the enemy shooter wounded and trying to escape. And then, something unexpected happened. In the midst of war, chaos, and violence, Scheider, who was also a trained medic, chose not revenge, but compassion. He treated the wounds of the very man who had tried to kill him, honoring his oath to preserve life, regardless of which side it came from. While snipers are sometimes seen clearly posted atop the White House or during major security events, operational snipers prefer to stay invisible. Hidden in plain sight, their survival depends on it. Their camouflage skills are second to none. Try spotting the sniper in the next image. Can you find him? Most people can't. Although snipers are known for their incredible accuracy, hitting a target with the first shot isn't always guaranteed. Every trigger pull is a balance of skill, patience, and sometimes luck. Let's say it's a clear day with no wind. A sniper lies prone, preparing to hit a target 900 meters away. Under ideal conditions, this is already a challenge. He fires. If he misses, the way the bullet hits the ground provides vital data. That's when the spotter comes in. With calm, precise instructions, the spotter guides the sniper. Adjust one mil up, a quarter mil left, reacquire. Following the command, the sniper realigns, takes the shot again, and this time, it hits. So who's really in charge of this deadly duo? While the sniper pulls the trigger, it's the spotter who reads the wind, calculates the shot, and commands the rhythm of engagement. Together, they dominate the battlefield, where every correction and every word can mean the difference between a hit and a miss. Yet one of a sniper's biggest enemies isn't always the target itself. It's the crosswind. Crosswinds can shift suddenly, affecting a shot at the very last second. That's why spotters carry advanced tools to measure wind speed and direction in real time. Gravity, often underestimated, also plays a major role. A bullet doesn't travel in a straight line. It follows a subtle arc as gravity pulls it downward. At longer distances, the sniper must aim higher. To do that, they use elevation and windage dials on their scope, aligning the reticle with the adjusted point of impact. But when there's no time for that, snipers might use a technique called holdover, adjusting their aim using the reticle's measurement lines rather than the physical scope settings. And then there's the Coriolis effect, a consequence of Earth's rotation. Our planet spins from west to east, and this spin subtly shifts the trajectory of long-range bullets. A shot fired west may hit lower than expected. Fired east, it might go high. This minor but critical factor is why flat earthers would make terrible snipers. To account for all these forces, wind, gravity, Coriolis, the distance to the target must be known with absolute precision. If the spotter misjudges a target at 800 meters as being 695 meters away, the bullet could land 20 centimeters too low. 
missing entirely. This is why snipers use laser rangefinders. These devices send a beam to the target and measure how long it takes to return. Consumer grade models work up to 100 meters, but military versions, often attached to binoculars or tripods, can detect targets 25 or even 40 kilometers away. In November 2023, the world witnessed a historic shot. Ukrainian sniper Kowalski, 58, landed a kill from an astonishing 3.8 kilometers, farther than the length of two Brooklyn bridges placed end to end. The bullet flew for nearly nine seconds before impact. A video was released to verify the record. When a sniper holds his rifle, even breathing and finger tension can alter the outcome. This is known as breath and trigger control. At extreme distances, even a heartbeat can throw off a shot. That's why elite snipers train to slow their pulse and shoot between heartbeats. National Geographic once invited a sniper to a lab and measured his trigger pull. It happened exactly mid-heartbeat. And by the way, unlike what Hollywood shows, military snipers rarely aim for the head. It's a small moving target. Beyond 300 meters, headshots become dangerously unreliable. Instead, they aim for the upper torso, a larger, more stable area. Hitting it increases the chance of disabling the target quickly and effectively. Police snipers operate differently. They usually engage at much shorter ranges and may need headshots in critical situations, such as when a suspect hides behind a hostage. But even that's nothing compared to aerial snipers. These shooters work from helicopters, firing at moving targets while they themselves are in motion. To increase stability, they wear special harnesses that absorb the aircraft's vibration. Engagement ranges are often kept within 220 meters. Although a helicopter can hover to allow for a cleaner shot, doing so makes it vulnerable to enemy fire. In high-risk scenarios, automatic weapons are preferred over sniper rifles. The pilot, often acting as spotter, plays a crucial role in stabilizing the platform and coordinating maneuvers so the sniper can land the shot. On the ground, a sniper's best weapon isn't their rifle. It's their invisibility. A sniper who's been spotted is a sniper who won't survive. That's where the ghillie suit comes in. More than clothing, it's a tool of near invisibility. Snipers customize it with natural elements from the environment to blur their outline, especially around the neck, underarms, and groin, to erase any trace of human form. This is both an art and a science. In dry grasslands, a sniper might weave dry grass into their suit to blend with the soil. It's dirty, uncomfortable, but essential. Even their uniform is modified. No zippers, no Velcro. These could jam with dirt or make noise. Instead, they use buttons in Cordura 500 fabric for durability. Face paint, camouflaged rifles, every detail matters. But the hardest part of the job, the stalk. Snipers are trained to crawl slowly, agonizingly slow, for hours across terrain just to get into position. Instructors attempt to spot them before they fire. The goal is simple, reach your target unseen. In real combat, snipers may spend days crawling, climbing, enduring heat, insects, and pain just to take one shot. Yet the trigger pull is only 10% of the job. The rest is observation, intelligence gathering, and battlefield coordination. From their hiding spots, snipers monitor enemy movement, relay data for artillery strikes, and confirm hit accuracy. Their success depends on survival skills, map reading, communication, and most importantly, teamwork with their spotter. At Fort Benning, Georgia, the U.S. Army Sniper School runs a grueling seven-week course. Candidates from every military branch, and since 2015, women too, can apply. In November 2023, Sergeant Masil became the first active duty female sniper in U.S. Army history. But don't think it's easy. Only four in 10 candidates pass. Psychologically, snipers are as feared as landmines. They strike suddenly with deadly precision and are incredibly hard to detect. Their presence alone can paralyze enemy movement with fear. But the job carries a dark risk. If captured, snipers are more likely to be mistreated. Unlike regular soldiers, snipers operate from the shadows, often striking without warning. That's why, in dillous situations, they may ditch their ghillie suits and rifles, trying to blend in and hide their identity. So how do you stop a sniper? High-value targets become more discreet, removing rank insignias, avoiding salutes, 
and creating no-salute zones to avoid being spotted. As active countermeasures, militaries deploy their own snipers and even train dogs, highly effective since the Vietnam War. But in modern warfare, the sniper's greatest threat may not be another shooter. It's a drone, equipped with thermal cameras and high-powered optics. Today's drones can spot even well-camouflaged snipers by tracking their body heat. And with precision munitions, they can strike before the sniper ever sees them coming. In today's battlefield, even the invisible are being watched. 